I was Spanish speaking and so most of the people we taught were Mexican, but we also had a little bit of um, Latin America. So we, we taught people from Honduras. I taught some people from Chile. There's just different people from everywhere. Um, cool thing about San Diego is it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of a melting pot sometimes. There's certain parts um, of San Diego where there are different types of cultures from everywhere. But for the most part, I, I served with the Latino culture. Um, and so one thing that one tradition that they do that I loved when we were in San Diego was the Dia de los Muertos holiday. And so that that's huge in um, in Mexico. It's like their Halloween, but it's huge in San Diego because in Old Town they have a whole street dedicated to the Dia de los Muertos. And so you get like, we got to do some fun stuff for Dia de los Muertos. We got to get this certain kind of bread and we had like, there was like a ward party around it and that was really cool. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting too is I come from a pretty well-off family. I'm from Holiday and I didn't think going to San Diego or any stateside mission for that matter that I would have this huge culture shock or this culture difference in my life. But I served in, I got called um, my second area in San Diego, um, it's called City Heights. And there are parts of City Heights that are, I mean, it's kind of known as the ghetto a little bit. At least that's from what I had heard. Um, but there's parts of that where I saw some of the poorest of poor from what, from my own life that I've, I'd never seen before. You know, people living in these little alleyways with like seven kids in this tiny little ha house, but they're so happy. And that's one thing that I love about the Hispanic culture is you get to see how people, they were so happy with so little. Um, obviously there's a little bit of both. There's people who have money and who, who don't, but one thing that's cool about San Diego is there are both, you know, I served up in Poway where there's a lot of people with more money there. And it seems that like, I don't know, the more wealthy people live there. Um, but then over in city Heights, um, we called it Barrio Vente. It's ward 20. That's the ward number. Anyway, in Barrio Vente, there was so many humble people who had worked their whole lives, but they're still happy and they're, it was awesome to see that and the culture difference that I got to experience in, in both of those areas. You know, when you're living in Utah, the best Mexican food you can find is usually Cafe Rio. And then you go on a mission Spanish speaking and it's not Mexican food at all. It's super American. Um, and one thing I, I just like started to love Mexican food. I loved spicy. I loved trying new things, but the thing me and my companion started to track how many tortillas we got. So we, we figured it out. We did some math. We averaged about two tortillas a day over the course of 18 months, which is a lot of tortillas. Each of them are about 150 calories. And so there were some days where we would get overloaded with food and it was just like so much, but like you don't want to like, you don't want to offend people because from my experience, when you, if, if somebody offers you food from the Hispanic culture and you say no, it's kind of offensive to them, um, especially when they've put in time and effort. And so you just keep on going. You just pray for more for room in your stomach and, and you, you just hope and pray that it goes down. Okay. Um, but that's one thing, like now that I'm home, I, go to the nearest, ta nearest taco shop as much as I can. The thing that is very unique about the San Diego mission is the California burrito. So the day you get into the mission or the first week or so, your trainer is supposed to take you to the, to like some type of taco shop somewhere in San Diego and you get your first California burrito to be like initiated into the mission. And it's kind of a fun tradition that we have. And so now whenever I find a California burrito on a menu, I get it because it's so good. You got the French fries in there and it's so good, but that's my experience and I now I love spicy food I have to have sp like salsa with everything um and then you also sometimes with, if you're a Spanish missionary um you'll still eat with the English members and they'll give you you know your normal spaghetti and all that stuff which is it's good to have sometimes um it's good to have a little variety in there but you're also allowed to eat out when you have the money to do so which isn't very often but every every once in a while you can go eat out and spend some time with your district or whatever going to get wendy's or something but that's kind of get the best of both worlds when you're stateside so that's what i loved about it so i was really excited to get called spanish speaking i knew that i was gonna go some different language that's the only revelation i got for my mission call i just knew i'd go spanish speaking somewhere um so when i got to the mtc i was like i'm gonna nail it 
I had two years of Spanish, I'm ready to go. Like high school Spanish has prepared me. I didn't know anything though. When I got to the MTC, I didn't know anything, but then when you actually get into the field, you're like clueless, you don't know anything. Um, but the cool thing is, is to see the hand of the Lord because I, I don't know, it's crazy how you get there and you don't know what's going on, but all of a sudden it comes to you um, over time. And I think the biggest advice I'd give to any missionary is to just be patient with yourself because I think you expect to know it and you start comparing yourself. You're like, well, that person's been out six months and I've been out eight and they're better than me. And that's not what the mission is about. The mission isn't about getting the 16 credit exam when you get home and making sure you get all those A's. It's not about that. It's about being able to communicate the gospel in somebody else's language. And I think that's the problem a lot of people have is they are so, so hard on themselves that they just want to be better than the next missionary and they want to make sure that they're fluent by the time they get home. And yeah, like it's good motivation. Um, but I think that you have to remember that the language is to help you pr to, to preach the gospel. Um, for me, um, I had a funny moment when I was in training. We went and I asked somebody to pass the cerveza, which is beer instead of napkin, which is servietta. Um, there's just, a, you'll have those moments and you just have to laugh at yourself and don't beat yourself up for it. And I think the number one key to learning a language is to learn humility. Because if you're not going to be humble, then you're never going to learn it. Because first of all, God's not going to help you if you're not humble, but your companion doesn't want to help you either. And so being humble and asking, being willing to ask members, being willing to ask your investigators and also your companion, that's how you learn a language.